Well, you know, he started from scratch uh, a long time ago when he was a kid. He started just a little tackle shop in his father's liquor store. He had a little eight by eight foot space in the back of the shop, and uh, that was the beginning. And now well, it's that was the beginning. So how did he actually start expanding? How did he start building it? Because he didn't follow any rule books, right? No, 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 not at all. He, he found a little inspiration with the L.L. Bean uh, megastore up in Maine. Um, that, that led him to start uh, really going large scale and putting attractions in the store. So he's got, you know, 20,000 gallon aquariums. He's got stuffed animals all over the place. He's got <laughs> bowling alleys now and, uh, you know, archery ranges and shooting ranges and all kinds of things. So what do we know about him? Well, he's, he's very shy, uh, as we media shy, as we said. Um, is he media shy or is he just shy? I, I don't think he's shy. I, you know, if you, uh, the company's uh, site has videos of him fishing. He seems you okay. know, very folksy and down to earth. Uh, Approachable. I think he's just, yeah, I just don't think he's very interested in, in uh, exposure. Right, but what is he like, though? Well, I don't know. Seth Lubov, our, our writer in Los Angeles, did the story. He visited the, the store down in Cuco, uh, was it Rancho Cucamonga in Southern California. Um, you know, we don't know that much about him other than he's, Seth used the word avuncular, meaning he's kind of, you know, rather uh, paternal and it reminded him of, a, of an uncle, of a nice uncle who would take you out fishing. Okay. Well, he's expanding though, right? I mean, he's, clearly he's a savvy businessman, so he's expanding. So where are they expanding to and how are they doing it? So the, the, the heart of it is really in the Midwest and the South. So he's got a lot of stores in Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas. Now he's moving up to the Northeast. Uh, he's opening up a store in Washington and outside Seattle. Um, so it's really it's becoming a national chain. Uh, and now occasionally he uses uh, taxpayer money to help expand. That's uh, people love this store. The, the only critics, and these the critics, mind you, are competitors who are, you know, crying foul over this. But occasionally, uh, the government, local municipalities will give him uh, tax incentives to build in their communities. Why? Why would they do that? Because it's, their thinking is it'll bring more uh, business to the area. Because th this is a very, um, th these are kind of destination shops. Again, you know, the, the waterfalls, the aquariums, all this stuff. People love going to this, these things. So they're hoping it'll bring in business and raise the local tax. But don't the rivals get those same tax subsidy or tax incentives, or is it just his stores that do? No, it, the competitors also do. Cabela's and Dick's Sporting Goods. This is a typical thing. So again, I think it's an unfair criticism. Right. That, that certainly seems unfair if they're all benefiting right. from it. Then, right. uh, w what do we know about in terms of financing? How he finances the, the expansion of these stores? Well, you know, he's, it's really all done internally, other than these these um, tax incentives that the local municipalities will grant him. It's all done internally. Uh, to our knowledge, he's really only done one round of debt uh, financing through Moody's, that, that Moody's tracks anyway. Um, so that's how we were able to find out really how much revenue the company generates. Okay, so it sounds like it's pretty closely held then it's, in many yes. ways? Okay.